Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 18th October 2017. The first article, US backed forces wrest Raqqa from IS. You know that the Raqqa is the notional capital of ISIS and the second biggest city under their control was Mosul. So Raqqa is taken back by the Syrian democratic forces and Mosul is also taken back by the Iraqi forces. So it has brought in the aspirations of statehood to an end for the ISIS. It also confined the ISIS to few small towns in Syria. And second thing is, northeast monsoon may set in by October end. So northeast monsoon is also called retreating monsoon. It gives rain to Tamil Nadu, parts of Tamil Nadu, coastal Andhra Pradesh, Rayal Seema, Puducherry. So, it is expected to be a normal monsoon this year. And Pranam Mukherjee, he recently wrote a book on coalition politics. He is trying to explain few things on the coalition era which we see in his interview later. The next aspect, editorial page. Making the internet disappear. You know that internet today is connected with many aspects of our life. Many of our fundamental rights. The right to work, right to associate, right to freedom of expression, or right to do business. Everything is conduct, connected with internet today. So, there are two rules with regard to internet shutdown that have to be implemented. One is rule of proportionality. Any of the violation of the rights of the citizens, compromise on the rights of citizens, shall be balanced with the need for maintenance of order. So, internet shutdown which can be a violation of the rights of citizen shall be balanced um, with the needs for the maintenance of law and order. It means it shall not be taken at very first instance. Um, we have to weigh the pros and cons before shutting down the internet. Either you take in Jammu and Kashmir, Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, even Andhra Pradesh, Haryana, internet shutdown has become a first step action by the state to maintain the order, especially to stop the spread of messages. There is a deep-sighted problem to this. So WhatsApp, Facebook, where the messages are shared by the people and the message of violence is fast spread are not under the control of the Indian government and their action is not swift to the requests of the Indian government. So the government is finding a way out in the form of internet shutdowns. So any internet shutdown, if it has to happen, it has to be partial. It means that uh, only certain websites or certain apps have to be shut down, not the entire internet. And also it has to be for specified duration. So any officer who is ordering for internet shutdown, he has to be clear why he is doing that. As of now, there is no accountability set on this officer. So a judicial scrutiny of the decisions taken by the officer is essential to maintain this. Political and partisan. You know that speaker's office is often criticized calling it as partial and partisan. The reasons are this. Now, a speaker's office nurtures political ambitions and he has to be intricately connected with his party to get elected into the next election. Many a times, implementation of anti-defection law and authority of the speaker is a clear reflection of this. The speaker's office disqualified the dissenters in the party on the grounds of defection. How it happened? Now let's take as per the anti-defection law, only if a member resigns or acts against the whip, then only he has to be disqualified. But expression of dissent is not considered as a matter for disqualification. Speaker in Arunachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, even in today's Tamil Nadu, they have disqualified the members of Legislative Assembly only on the ground that um, they are, have expressed the dissent on their government. And second aspect, if you observe, Mr. Uh, uh, Patil, Shivraj Patil, when he was the Speaker, what he stated is, a small piecemeal defections um, can be counted together and be exempted under the exemption clause of split or merger. Today it is called as merger. So this has weakened the anti-defection law maximum. So in this context, what is the way forward? What are the best international practices in the conduct of Speaker's office? In the United Kingdom, Speaker's election to the next parliament um, is guaranteed. It is guaranteed by the way that uh, the opposition do not field any candidates against him. And second, 
he is automatically promoted to the house of lords in india also we can experiment with the same and second aspect the president of in or sorry the speaker he shall be disqualified from taking up any of the political office other than constitutional offices like president vice president the decisions with regard to anti defection law can be vested with the president of india and he shall act in accordance with the recommendation of election commission of india if you can take these steps the politicization of the speaker's office can come to an end new kid on the block now austria also has got an young leader a 31 years leader but we don't need to get into the politics of austria etc let us see the larger phenomenon if you compare the elections in hungary austria and germany even in uh, uk so slowly a new trend is growing in france uh, emmanuel macron has come to power an young leader so young leadership is taking over in europe so you know, in canada uh, and also in canada and second aspect is today west is facing the surge of right wing you can see that in france uh, germany maria le pen in france and uh, alternative for germany in germany and also in austria so the growth of right wing is based on two things one is the fears of immigration and second one is employment of faith and fever so the faith and fever so recently with for dengue treatment the government of tamil nadu has offered an herbal medicine this herbal medicine is not tested and not proven so in this context the modern medicine and its progress is based on evidence if the governments are resorting to practices which are not based on evidence people may interpret it as a treatment and may avoid going to hospitals that can increase the death toll so that's why government shall be cautious in taking such a decisions according to this article now let's get into the page here we have the interview of president pranam mukherjee the former president pranam mukherjee let me explain it this way the former president pranam mukherjee he wrote a book that is the coalition years from 1996 to 2012 in which he is trying to express how the coalition era has shaped the indian politics and how the congress dominance has come into an end in 1996 if i am not wrong there was panchamarhi declaration in which congress has expressed that it will not get into any coalition i think 1998 and then in 2004 just before the lok sabha elections in the shimla declaration it has made a decision to come into coalition politics and then upa1 upa2 has come into existence why did congress change its decision the successful vajpayee government has given a confidence to the congress that it can also take forward the coalitions but however the coalition partners have eaten away into the congress vote share uh, rather than the bjp share finally congress has reduced to a corner because of this and growth of the regional parties have become stronger and second aspect is on secularism former president has expressed this way india a can only be secular nothing else so india civilization is continuing for the very reason that it was able to absorb different new elements into the social social sphere either if you take about babylonian egyptian or abyssinian all these civilizations have come to an end but indian civilization has thrived the reason for the thriving of indian civilization is its ability to assimilate and second aspect is growth of civil society especially if you see lokpal act that is clearly inspired by the movement of the civil society india against corruption so he clearly states that the law making is no more an arena of law makers alone so civil society is strongly coming in into that particular sphere that's what he expresses his views on now let's get into the news page here nationalism can't be imposed says pranab so nationalism is something which the people has to develop into their minds a sense of loyalty and respect if the state starts imposing the same obviously people may develop reluctance to that and then hafiz produced before the board so the issue let's recollect this way mr hafiz said he was put on terror charges before under anti terror act now 
he was shifted to other ordinances where he can get a bail and released from house arrest this shows the dual stand of the pakistan on terrorism obviously how united states will react to it we have to wait and see and there is a huge cash prize of 10 million dollars on his head by the united states of america so rohingya crisis was then syria says un un body un international organization for migration has clearly stated rohingya is a humanitarian crisis of a scale and the world has to focus on the same us ploy against iran envoy Iranian ambassador Mr Ansari has stated that um, the actions of United States are uh, to deprive Indian energy market to Iranians and second is um, India has uh, clearly stated that it is trying to diversify its uh, energy basket um, and so importing the gas from the United States of America second uh, ambassador also clearly stated that um, the chabahar port is on track the agreement came that brought in between india afghanistan and iran is going to be ratified by the iranian parliament soon according to the ambassador hayush hospitals in 3 years so prime minister of india is encouraging alternative medicine and he has assured the nation that there will be hayush hospital in every district and he clearly stated that the world is moving back to nature and wellness ayush is uh, trying to maintain this particular balance with regard to the treatment and then today communist party of china's meeting has started congress has started now what can be the outcomes of this xi jinping is going to continue for another term and xi is also going or xi is the theory is also going to be made part of the chinese constitution he has proposed for four comprehensives these are comprehensively build a moderately prosperous society comprehensively deepen reform comprehensively govern the nation according to law comprehensively govern the party strictly these are the four comprehensives mr z is proposing for this can be adopted into the constitution of communist party of china and uh, this will equate mr xi jinping along with deng and also mao and then us not ruling out direct talks with north korea so let us see what happens uh, as war of words is still there between these two countries and in the last page i gave you the notes which will be available to you at likes.in/civilspread thank you very much and all the best